There are places in and around our great cities where the natural world has all but disappeared. You can make out streets and sidewalks, autos, parking garages, advertising billboards, monuments of glass and steel, but not a tree or a blade of grass or any animal besides, of course, the humans. There are lots of humans. Only when you look straight up through the skyscraper canyons can you make out a star or a patch of blue. Reminders of what was there long before humans came to be. But the bright lights of the big cities bleach out the stars, and even that patch of blue is sometimes gone, tinted brown by industrial technology. It's not hard going to work every day in such a place to be impressed with ourselves. How we've transformed the earth for our benefit and convenience. But a few hundred miles up or down, there are no humans. Apart from a thin film of life at the very surface of the earth, an occasional intrepid spacecraft, and some radio static, our impact on the universe is nil. It knows nothing of us. For 99.9% .9 of the time since our species came to be, we were hunters and foragers, wanderers on the savannas and the steppes. There were no border guards then, no customs officials. The frontier was everywhere. We were bounded only by the earth and the ocean and the sky. When the climate was congenial though, when the food was plentiful, we were willing to stay but unadventurous, overweight, careless. In the last 10,000 years, an instant in our long history, we've abandoned the nomadic life. We've domesticated the plants and animals. Why chase the food when you can make it come to you? For all its material advantages, the sedentary life has left us edgy, unfulfilled. Even after 400 generations in villages and cities, we haven't forgotten. There are now people on every continent and the remotest islands, from pole to pole, from Mount Everest to the Dead Sea, on the ocean bottoms, and even, occasionally, in residence 200 miles up, humans like the gods of old, living in the sky. These days, there seems to be nowhere left to explore. Victims of their very success, the explorers now pretty much stay home. We know now that the planets are not stars, but other worlds gravitationally lashed to the sun. Just as the exploration of the Earth was being completed, we began to recognize it as one world among an uncounted multitude of others circling the sun or orbiting the other stars that make up the Milky Way galaxy. Maybe it's a little early. Maybe the time is not quite yet. But those are the worlds promising untold opportunities beckon. Just now, there are a great many matters that are pressing in on us that compete for the money it takes to send people to other worlds. Should we solve those problems first, or are they a reason for going? There's plenty of housework to be done down here on Earth, and our commitment to it must be steadfast. But we're the kind of species that needs a frontier for fundamental biological reasons. Every time humanity stretches itself and turns a new corner, it receives a jolt of productive vitality that can carry it for centuries. There's a new world next door, and we know how to get there.